So, <clears throat> welcome students to this uh, lecture on genetic algorithms. In this lecture, I'll try to address some of the basic things on a very elementary level. It is uh, this will be these questions which I'm going to answer are basically what is GA? Uh, what kind of problem it solves? What is the structure of problem it solves? And can you solve such problems without GA? So is it possible to solve? Is it just something that GA solves which nobody else or no other methods or no other algorithms can do? We'll just see what uh, are the answers to these uh, problems. So first is what is GA basically if you say in a very crude sense GA is a mathematical program okay or an algorithm but that can be said about anything which is written in a mathematical form then I can just elaborate it that it is a search algorithm or a scheme to solve a class or a certain class of problems class of problems called optimization problems so there are specific type of uh, this algorithm solves a specific type of problems the algorithm uses and the third important thing about GA is the scheme which is developed basically this algorithm uses biological concept of natural selection okay so this that is, that is why this name is that is what is gen the genetic algorithm names come from there that uh, what kind of uh, it is based on a biological concept of natural selection then uh, let us see what kind of problem it solves okay so first i'll that means i will like to first define the <clears throat> what is what is meant by optimization problem or a mathematical problem which GA solves so if you see uh, GA can be uh, GA solves problem which are stated say, in this way that is either you have to minimize or maximize a f function fx which is called objective function okay such that these constraints are also satisfied okay so it is basically solving these functions so that these constraints are also satisfied okay now the constraints can be of uh, they can be expressed in this way that is either it is an equality of greater than or equal to type or it can be an inequality of less than or equal to type or it may be of equal to type and sometimes you mix these two together you can also get bound constraints so these bound constraints are basically on variables so if you have a x there will be upper bound which x would not cross okay so x should be less than or equal to upper bound and x will be always greater than or equal to the lower bound so these are also bound so these are type of constraints which are possible and which this optimization problem basically uh, tries to solve. Now uh, let us see what is the structure of problem which uh, which uh, optima which uh, GS solves. Okay, so. And this uh, objective functions we have just seen on the last page is basically uh, defined by objective function xs and gx okay all different kind of gx this fx and gx could be explicit mathematical expression so that is possible to have a expressive uh, exp explicit mathematical expression or all this objective function may not be a mathematical expression but they come from a particular process or particular kind of simulation okay 
so it means the simulation may not be expressible at least uh, practically in theory everything can be put into mathematical form but in practice it is it is not uh, possible to put this into a mathematical function but it may be a result of a simulation or a process for example this for two one is very clear that you have expression some kind of expression in x y and so on so that is okay for example in two suppose you have want to calculate losses in a transmission network so this is a elaborate program depending on what is the load and what is the generation you get a loss and it is a simulation pro pro program in itself it's very difficult to uh, write this in form of explicit mathematical expression for a given large system for small system it is possible but for a large system it is almost impossible to write a single mathematical expression which will give you the value of losses or total losses in a transmission network similarly simulated gain or loss for a planned investment you plan to invest certain things in a certain business and depending on various factors you get, get gain and loss and that may not be actually uh, possible to put into a explicitly uh, explicit mathematical expression okay so <clears throat> this is a kind of problem which we ha may have in actual practice the objective function and the constraints may not be expressible very clearly <clears throat> now can you uh, the next question arises can you solve such problems without g that is in a way to say what is special about G? Okay, so let us see how we solve uh, this optimization problem in actual practice in a conventional way. Okay, so in conventional methods, the optimization problems are solved using a very specified kind of steps. I can give you some general concept of solving it. It is no in no way very very well defined but loosely i am trying to express that how this uh, uh, optimization problems are actually solved so if you have a optimization problem which is uh, defined as fx minimize fx and subject to gx and so on okay and greater than equal to and so on so suppose you have this problem to be solved so what you do is first you choose the value of x which you call a starting point which is x0 x is not a simple value but it is a, in fact a vector so there will be several value several variables in it okay so n dimensional vector so you choose first a n dimensional vector that you call a starting point where you start the algorithm and then after choosing that what you have to do is in step two you'll have to estimate delta x so when you have got x equal to x0 obviously you can compute what is fx0 which is this function objective function so once you calculate this objective function then you estimate a value delta x some value delta x which uh, which actually says that this, this is a small value and this delta x can be you use any method you use a good guess or use a gradient or any other method you wish to estimate a small value delta x okay then you also choose using certain method uh, parameter s okay which is called so this delta x is basically called direction this is indicating a direction in which you want to go and this the delta x gives you the the <clears throat> amount you want to move in that direction in this direction how much you want to move so in step 3 you choose a step length then you calculate a new trial point xt which is x0 plus s into delta x okay 
and then obviously you can compute fxt at the trial point now if this trial point is less than fx0 i am assuming a minimization problem so if fxt is less than fx0 which was initially taken okay in step 1 then you set this fx0 as fxt so you put this in this and leave the older point whatever you got x0 and substitute fxt as x, xt as x0 and again you go to step 2 so you have found a better point fxt and now you again do the same process maybe to better it and second one is if you don't if this don't happen if this is not happening that means your fxt is uh, not uh, less than fx0 then you go to again at this point and possibly understanding that your direction was right and maybe you move too much in that direction which didn't get uh, so that you couldn't get the exact point a better point so you can go to that and you go on doing this process that is how you uh, go on doing this process and at a specified tolerance that at a given fxt when you reach a particular value of xt where you uh, where you say that yes that could be supposed to be a uh, minimum point or optimal point or you can say that i have done a lot of iterations or you can say that uh, uh, a lot of iterations have been done and therefore or in or the value of xt fxt doesn't change anymore okay on on or it changes very less so depending on a specified tolerance you can stop this algorithm so that is how in conventional method uh, the problem of optimization problem optimization problems are actually solved <clears throat> now what are the problem in this conventional methods so here again i have written that same algorithm first thing is this itself may be a problem first step itself may be a problem how to choose x0 but it is not a big problem it is a small problem because most of the time a person may be knowing because he has already solved that kind of a problem or that particular domain you can choose a starting point so in certain cases it may be a question mark but uh, uh, in several cases you can actually find a starting point now the second question is slightly bigger one how then the second step how to del uh, find out delta x you can guess the gradient or you can guess a point so that is a guesswork intelligent or unintelligent or the other way is to find a gradient which is one of the way of guessing a direction or there are other ways of guessing a direction based on gradient itself okay ways of finding gradient and uh, using that gradient you can estimate delta x okay but this how is bigger because in the cases when you don't have f of x explicitly defined okay so uh, you cannot actually uh, calculate the gradient because you need to calculate f dash x so that only you can find out the delta x for that okay? so you cannot find this f dash x uh, you can find only when fx is very well a defined expression and if it is a simulation program or something where fx cannot be explicitly defined then practically it is difficult to calculate gradient of that still there are methods to calculate gradient uh, but uh, it, it becomes difficult then again you the method is same so these are the two big questions that how you are going to guess the gradient and how you are going to find the gradient and what happens if the gradient fails to be evaluated at times the gradient becomes zero or something like that so there are so many points where this method can stall or it won't be going back and running it okay or 
uh, this this may at a starting point itself it may get stuck up so these are the problem in conventional method but remember if conventional methods are very straightforward if a problem can be solved with a conventional method uh, genetic algorithm is definitely going to take more time than solving a problem with conventional method if it can be solved so basically genetic algorithm is for those problems which which have this inherent problems these two that you cannot calculate the gradient and may be difficult to evaluate the point and the methods may have a tendency to get stuck up later once you have started because of some reason or other okay so that is how <coughs> conventional problems are uh, solved and that is the problem with conventional problem which we have just discussed now we'll see what ga does why ga becomes is, is something special about it it's not sp good for every problem okay it is very uh, it's it may be good for a certain set of problems so it is good for a loosely structured programming problem so fx is not basically a may not be explicit expression but it may be some kind of a kind of a some kind of a uh, program or something and you cannot basically find the gradient so a loosely structured problem where objective uh, function can only be calculated and can and, and it's difficult to express is express it is explicitly so you cannot get the gradient also the state uh, the constants may not be straightforward they may also have to be calculated and you don't have expect explicit uh, function for constraint because for getting uh, the delta x in the last slide if you remember getting the delta x uh, not only required uh, gradients of fx but also requires gradient of gx so uh, with this uh, what you get is uh, simply uh, you, you are not able to apply the conventional method there you can uh, apply ga so ga is good and basically it is a self-running and self-running pre-programmed search scheme so this search scheme is pre-programmed and it runs itself okay uh, and and it has uh, very less chances to get stalled it will not stop by itself because of the problem because of uh, you cannot compute the compute the derivative or something like that okay uh, it will not stop due to that reason it will go on running Till you want to stop it so this problem has a inherent ability to uh, run as much you want so that is how it is it is a kind of algorithm or a pre-programmed thing which can be used <clears throat> and uh, this pre-programming is done or that is inspired by the biological phenomena of survival of the test okay so this is a biological phenomena which was given by darwin and uh, <clears throat> i think uh, okay uh, so i think uh, we'll stop here we'll stop here and we'll see in the next lecture rest of the things so that is how why the 